Thank you. Hello. Do you remember the Rio Earth Summit in 1992? I do. I was 22 years old, and I was studying at Business School Lausanne, where I now serve as dean. It had a big impact on me. At that point, I started realizing that a world of new possibilities is emerging, a, poss a world where I can combine my personal passion with my professional experience to create, to help business become sustainable. So I got really excited when I heard about Rio Plus 20, the 20th anniversary of this very conference being organized. I thought, this is just what we need right now. We need another conference where people get touched as, as much as I did 20 years ago. When the rumor started about Rio Plus 20 becoming a failure, I got quite upset. I thought, we don't have time anymore now. We need massive change now. So during a meeting at the United Nations headquarters in New York at the end of 2010, I made a promise, a bit over-enthusiastically, that we, the business school community, would bring change, a positive disruption to Rio Plus 20. I hadn't really thought it through. I already had a full-time job, and I kind of made the promise as part of an engaged conversation. BSL is a small school, and I didn't think I had the credentials or the power to take on such a massive challenge. The problem was nobody else did either. A few colleagues, thank God, agreed with me that business schools weren't doing such a great job at developing the kinds of leaders we need. But how do you go about organizing or influencing 13,000 business schools worldwide if you're just a bunch of people? Now, this is the story of how we made 50 plus 20 a reality. The last time our sector, the business school education, got riveted was 50 years ago. In 1959, the Ford and Carnegie reports questioned the relevance of business education and wondered how relevant they really are. Um, they proposed to professionalize them, and the business model that you have today is kind of the result of that. Now, with Rio Plus 20 coming up, we thought it was high time to recalibrate business education with a new vision for the coming 20 years. So this is how we came up with 50 plus 20, as you can see on the screen behind me. More importantly, what we did is we created a global movement. And that global movement was spread around all continents. Our project manager lives in South Africa. An important first success story happened in Shillong in India. And our contributors from Peru told us much about how to work the collaborative. So our, our network joined with two other organizations worldwide, and the initiative got launched. The voice of the developing world was not only loud and clear, it was urgent. And it challenged us to embrace this truly gigantic task. The collection of voices that we heard were telling us the following thing. They said, <clears throat> if we want to create or support a world worth living in, what we need is we need to find a new, ways, a new way for us, for the people, to live together in our societies. We need to shift business from maximizing short-term profit to serving the common good. And we need new kinds of leaders who have the courage and the solidity to shape the transformation that we need. So this really questioned us in our concept of what business schools were all about. Now let's take a look of what we brought to Rio. Welcome! This is the business school of the future! We are here to talk about things that really matter, that matter to you. So we built benches so we can talk. So look to your neighbor and ask him what is really bothering you right now about the world. And then we continue, we have a conversation about this. And then you, the other neighbor asks you, what is really bothering you about the world right now? There was so much pressure on conference space in Rio that eventually we gave up trying to secure a venue. That's when the idea of pop-up business schools 
got in our heads. And we uh, asked artists around the world to create benches. This is one of them out of recycled material that we ended up carrying around Rio with us and we created facilitary spaces for the people in the street. So we basically sat down, listened and talked with the people about what was really bothering them. And what came up was climate, unemployment, corruption, water, health and poverty. In this circle of benches, our vision of the business school of the future was coming alive. We had imagined a facilitated space where stakeholders would meet to, turn, to discuss burning societal issues. We talked about the business school itself becoming a role model. Imagine an open space accessible for everybody. No more silos, no more elitism, no separation between research and practice, issue-centered learning for students and researchers to work side by side with stakeholders. Basically, a facilitated space that could be created anywhere, kind of the pop-up business school, particularly for developing worlds. Really what we were saying was that the business school of the future should serve people and the planet. And we said that they could engage in three different roles that you can see in the slides behind me. First of all, by educating globally responsible, transformative leaders, by enabling business to serve the common good, by contributing relevant research, and by engaging in the transformation of the economy for the good of all. So. How did we go about creating this vision? The co-creative process was full of ups and downs. We started with a, an amazing visioning session at a dance studio in New York, where we got a first sense of the vision. The remaining months were kind of a lot of empty uh, or lonely work by just a few of us. Thereafter, we held a lot of stakeholder meetings. Our vision got pulled apart and put back together again and again. I think we created some 17 versions of the vision. The crucial moment, however, was the last stakeholder meeting in Brussels, just four months before the Rio Plus 20 conference. The stakes were high. It was now or never that we were going to achieve alignment between all the, the contributors to the vision. The first half a day felt like a total mess. Every, everybody was criticizing everything. I thought the whole thing was going to fall apart. Then somebody had a great idea. He said, why don't we all take five minutes and we write down the vision in our own words? After a short break, we met again in our customary circle. We had put a camera in the middle and each of us was reading the pitch to the camera in the, in the two minutes he had. Now imagine a circle of the 30 most diverse people from around the globe sitting together, slowly realizing that what we were all saying was basically the same thing just different words. The meaning was the same. So a few of us put in a night shift and we realized we had been sitting on the solution for three months. And when we presented it the next morning, everybody applauded and the vision 50 plus 20 got approved. What has happened since Rio? Last June it happened. Uh, we were quite surprised. The number of unimaginable things have happened since then. More than a dozen business schools have agreed to form a global doctorate alliance focused on developing future capable faculty. The European Foundation for Management Development, EFMD, the home of 800 leading business schools, has embraced the 50 plus 20 vision as one of their main achievements in 2012 and has changed their accreditation standard. This means that Europe's top leading business schools are going to undergo deep change in the next five years. The 50 plus 20 roadshow is going to be traveling the world, visiting business schools that are open for change. And lastly, the world's two largest governing bodies of business education joined forces to work on sustainability and responsibility together using the 50 plus 20 work as their foundation for this, something that would have been unimaginable just a year ago. 
if things continue developing like this, we may get to a point where 50 plus 20 achieves a similar kind of impact as the Ford and Carnegie reports did 50 years ago. So why am I telling you this story? I realized a few things. First, one person can make a big difference. If you are alone, you have no resources and no money, you can still make something big happen. I was, and I still am, a dean at a tiny business school that hardly anybody knows. <laughs> change can happen at the fringes of the system. Disruptive change may have to happen this way. Two, have the courage to think big, and then talk to anybody about it who is willing to listen. Three, it's bigger than you. Make sure that the foundation of your work is based on an open, so open source mentality, inviting contributions from anybody at any time. And lastly, simply get started. Make an impossible promise, put everything you have behind it, and never give up. I believe that if each of us engages in changing the small part of the universe that we have a part of, then we together we can easily change the world. The fact that you're listening to this gives me hope that we may have already started doing just that. Thank you. <laughs>